Most beekeepers rush in to fix something that isn't broken because it feels like the responsible thing to do. After all, that's how we know what's going on inside the hive, right? But it's also how we silently destroy colony efficiency, stress the colony, and waste some energy that we'll never get back. We've been trained as beekeepers to believe that more intervention equals better outcomes and therefore stronger hives. The instinct to act and perform a hive inspection is a reactive one, not a strategic one. And in a hive, reaction is expensive. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've watched hundreds of colonies through the year as they manage thousands of tasks simultaneously. Each bee with its own role and its own rhythm. Different hives in different seasons and different climates. And they have, no matter where they are, the same pattern. And I learned, and it took me a while to learn this, that unnecessary intervention didn't only cost the system in energy of some form, but it also cost me in the long run as well. No matter how we intervene as beekeepers, whether it's too early, right on time, or too late, or too often, or not enough, either way, our intervention always has an effect on the colony that they never fully recover from. It's not like we're harming our bees. Don't misunderstand. I mean everything, even our own inspections, cause a certain kind of pressure. We interrupt pheromone, dispersion, nurse bees doing their things, foragers coming home, probably a little bit confused. Who's this guy or this gal in my hive? What do they think they're doing? And these ill-timed hive inspections that simply suit our feeling of needing to know what's going on, they have a ripple effect throughout the rest of the season. And the impact ends up being far greater than we realize. A lot of things are attributed to just mites, just beetles, just nutritional deficiencies. If we could see a chart on how the impact of an intervening beekeeper affected the colony, I think we'd be really surprised. Now, I'm not advocating a non-interference beekeeping method. Don't get me wrong here. But here's the part that no one ever seems to notice. When we go into a colony, we're looking for problems. That's what our mindset is for. We wanna see what's going on here that I can fix. But that's the wrong mindset to go into a colony with. Every bee already knows its role. Every action that they take, that we take, it has a cost, and that's normal. Just going to the store costs us a little bit of gas, and that's all right. Certain costs are worth it, and they pay out in the end. So what if we ask, instead of how can I fix this problem I'm seeing, or at least perceiving, what if we asked how is this colony currently allocating its resources? In other words, what's going on here that I'm missing? Sometimes the safest rule in beekeeping is non-interference. Not because there's nothing happening or because everything's perfect, but because the system is already working. They're already in the process of something when we interfere it. And it was working on quietly balancing that process out on its own. And oftentimes when we have too many interventions, they're still recovering and rebalancing from the last time we were inside the colony. Now, when I was working with commercial beekeepers in Florida, I never had the chance to become a beginner beekeeper. I never had bees of my own at first, like most of you may have. I didn't get to make my own mistakes. I was simply a hired hand and I had to do what I was told and learn and observe along the way so I could learn to read what these guys were reading. And so 15 years goes by before I finally get my own bees and I didn't have those same beginner struggles. And although I don't relate with those, I see them every day. And through that lens of beginner struggle, I can see what shortcuts beginners could make because I see through another lens as well these professional commercial beekeepers I was working with, they learn how to read their colonies with minimal interference, 
only doing what needed to be done. They did it broadly across every apiary we, we went to, but they understood how to read the bees. I remember one time going out in the yard with my mentor and we got into the hives and to me, it looked like they didn't have a lot of food on them. It was kind of spotty capped honey, but he could tell that they were in the process of bringing in more that we just needed to back out and give them a little bit more time. Now, I didn't see that at the time, like I just said. I didn't have that trained eye yet. But sure enough, next time we came back, it was night and day what those colonies looked like. And it just astounded me that this guy could see the trajectory of these colonies instead of the traditional snapshot hive inspection symptomatic view that most of us go into a hive looking for. And so because he knew to back out before we got into these colonies unnecessarily too deep, we were able to reduce the cost of our intervention until it mattered most the next time we came back. So if you remember one thing from today, remember this. The economy of a beehive operates on its own balance rather than the balance we think it should have. The seasons is something that the bees read constantly every day, kind of like a newspaper. What's going on today? And it's different every day. And they balance their brood and they balance their food stores according to that. We come along and we say, oh, there's not enough food. Oh, there's not enough brood. And then we come up with some way to intervene to make sure that they always look how we expect and want to see them. And I get it, a strong colony is a beautiful colony and that's what we all want. But a strong colony in spring and a strong colony in summer and a strong colony in fall all look completely different in population size, food storage, and colony activity. Each bee is a tiny little worker and each of their actions and their roles are very deliberate in the hive. Their energy is finite. They only have as long as they can live to contribute to the colony and do their thing. And so their effort is extremely valuable. Patience allows us to witness their efficiency that we could never create ourselves by intervening as beekeepers. So observation before inspection, before intervention, is more powerful than any action we could take because that observation is what we take into the hive when it matters most so that our actions can be deliberate and help the bees do what they're already doing instead of what we think they should be doing. This perspective changes everything we do about beekeeping because instead of going into a colony and looking for symptoms and trying to balance those out the way we've been taught, instead we ask ourselves, what can I observe first to know what process is already going on right now? And how can I, with the least amount of intervention, help them do that thing? So spring, summer, fall, and winter, each have their own micro economies at work. Watching without interfering trains us to see what matters the most. And when you do act, it's strategic, informed, and far less costly to the colony because now, we're guiding colony direction instead of managing colony symptoms. This way of reading a hive applies to every season before every inspection. And oftentimes it tells us we don't even to need to inspect at all. And that's why in the next video, we're going to explore how small signals forecast major outcomes. Thank you guys for joining me today. Don't forget to check out the comment pinned below for resources to help you do what you're already wanting to do and that's to be the best beekeeper that you can be. Hi, Dr. Rao.